Hello everyone and welcome to this episode where I cover different types of paint masks for canopies and other clear parts. There are many ways to do this, but this is my way. In this example I will focus on clear parts on aircraft models. But this can of course be used for other types or purposes where you want to have a very specific paint mask. The traditional way of doing this is to cut the paint masks by hand. For this you need some masking tape and a hobby knife. Make sure that you have a fresh blade and be careful not to cut yourself. I start by placing pieces of tape around the edges of the canopy. After that I recommend to trace the edge around the frame with a cocktail stick to burnish the tape and get a defined shape so it's easy to see where you should make the cut. Carefully make a cut around the edges and peel off the tape around the frame. There are a number of manufacturers of pre-cut masking sets that uses paper or vinyl material for the mask. Some kits have masking sets from more than one manufacturer and some kits unfortunately receive no love at all. I just recently found out that one important aspect of this is to buy the correct masking sets for your kit. In this example of a pre-cut mask, the masking set was for another kit. Sometimes you can get lucky, but in this case the masking set didn't fit at all. So it was actually quite useless. I discovered this in the middle of the build and I had to come up with another solution. So that is what the rest of this video will be all about. I will use some masking tape for this method also. I need a couple of pieces of tape large enough to cover one side of the canopy. I start by placing the tape aligned against the fuselage at the bottom of the clear part. After that I trace the windscreen frame using a fine point sharpie pen. I know that it doesn't look so awesome right now, but the important part here is to outline the corners and the general shape of the window frame. The rest will be sorted out later in the software. Then I continue with the large canopy areas one after another and I place them on a paper side by side. We only need to copy the shapes of one side of the canopy.
I also added some extra lines freehand before I scanned the paper using a flatbed scanner. Okay, in this example I used a Twain driver to access the scanner inside Silhouette Studio. If you prefer to use Adobe Illustrator or any other tool, that's perfectly fine. Just to explain what's happening here, I'm making a grayscale scan and cropping the size of the scan before I import it into Silhouette Studio. So, the first step is to trace the outline of the drawing, and for do that I need to adjust the threshold to get a distinct outline. And after that I can select Trace Outer Edge. After that I delete the scanned bitmap image, since I don't need that anymore. Now we have a vectorized version of my drawing, which makes it easier to clean up and fine tune the shape of the window. Another way of doing this is to manually trace the outline of the drawing, but I personally find that more time consuming than to clean up after the trace tool. Okay, my next step is to start to clean up all the redundant points in the vector image. I like to have as few points as possible while still maintaining the shape of the drawing. Remember that the corners are the reference points here, so you should only remove or adjust points in between. We have only done one side of the canopy, remember? So when I'm happy with the result of the first side, I copy it and then I mirror it. The front glass of the windscreen had a quite simple shape, so I draw that freehand based on some measurements and by eyeballing the shape of the windscreen. If I want paint masks for the landing gear, navigation lights or markings, I normally add them at this stage. Alright, let's align everything and send it to the cutting machine.
I think that this result is as good as a commercial aftermarket product. A masking set like this in 172 scale normally costs around 5 euros, but the cost of this masking set is a fraction of that. The next step is to place it on the canopy and check that everything looks good. Normally I need to make one or maybe two adjustments at max. In some cases everything fits perfectly on the first one. After that I use some masking fluid to fill out the open areas. You can use small pieces of masking tape to patch the open areas if you prefer to do it that way. Alright, everything is ready for paint. Now comes the most rewarding, but also the most nerve-wrecking part. It's time to remove the paint masks. But everything turned out fine. Thank you for watching and I hope that you have found this little demo useful. See you in the next episode. Bye for now.